Welcome on in, ladies and gentlemen, to episode number four of Let's Go Race. Steve with David Stocks. I'm Mark Jones here with you. So glad to have you with us. It is our Christmas episode of Let's Go Racing. We have brought in our families. The one and only Kim Starr is here, along Hello. with Dominic Oregon and his brother, Martin Oregon, and my own father, Charlie Jones, is also here. So, everybody, welcome in. It's a family affair on today's show. And, David, we'll start with you. Merry Christmas, my friend. How is everything down in uh, Frisco with you and the family in front of that lovely Christmas tree and Santa Claus there? <laughs> hey, man, it's the, it's the, it's the time, of, time of year and uh, just a, a beautiful time and just love the spirit of the holidays and love Christmas and just, just love this time of year. And, and man, I'm just, it's cool to have my wife Kim here with me uh, this evening. And, uh, man, it's really cool, Tyler, to have your dad there and to Dominic to have your brother. I just – you know, when I think about Christmas, I think about family. So it's only fitting that we have family members, family members sitting in on our show with us today. So it's pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. And uh, David, the, the sport of race at NASCAR in particular, family is right in the uh, heart and soul of uh, this sport. No doubt about it. You know, it's, uh, I don't care what type of racing you do, drag racing, IndyCar racing, midget car, USAC. It, it just doesn't matter. You just our whole industry as a whole. We're all one big family. You know, people say, you know, you're so nice to the, you know, I, I go, obviously after we get done racing at Kansas, we'll go down to Lakeside Speedway, the dirt track there, man. I love being in the garage or the, the pit area and talking to people. It's, man, we're just, you know, guy says, man, we're just racing street stock. I say, Hey dude, we all do the same thing. We, they, they wave the green flag and we're all trying to get to the checker flag first. Just, some types of racing gets more, more exposure than others, you know what I mean? But we're all one big family, and uh, you're exactly right, Tyler. Our, our NASCAR family, our racing family is just one big family. It's really a small industry, and, 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 and I love how you explain that. We're, it's, just, it's family, man. It's all about family. No question about it. Dominic, uh, you and your brother, Martin, uh, tell us about uh, Martin and uh, you, you two's uh, relationship uh, here in, in the uh, holidays. Yeah, we're really grateful to have Christmas and be under the same roof, and we're really happy to be here. Martin's my younger brother of three years, but you look at us, a lot of people think we could pass for twins, or Martin being the older brother because he can get the whole beard going, but – <laughs> yeah, it, it's awesome to have him here for Christmas with us, and, and actually our, our day jobs, Martin and I work together at the same high school here in our hometown, and Martin helps out a lot with the football program, and he's a really good guy, man. He's somebody who is really an inspiration to me and somebody that pushes me to be better and better every day, so I'm happy that he agreed to come on the podcast with us today. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. Awesome. Welcome, Martin. Yes, definitely. Yes. I appreciate uh, you guys. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, Martin. Uh, my dad, Charlie Jones, uh, what, a, what a guy. We could do a whole podcast just ourselves. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my dad you know, works uh, you know, full-time with Farmers Insurance, and I've uh, been doing that for several years. And, uh, but number one thing is he's been my dad, to me and my sister, and my, my uh, you know, uh, husband and my mom for you know, uh, close to 30 years and everything. And and, uh, you know, just very thankful for my dad. And, and I would say, too, guys, where I think we could relate in this is that, you know, in the sports world, my love of sports, you know, was a big part of, you know, my dad. You know, he uh, – when, uh, when I was a kid, how I became a NASCAR fan actually was uh, there was a Christmas where I got a, a NASCAR video game. You remember this? I do. Go ahead. <laughs> and uh, you had Jeff Gordon in the Rainbow 24. Yeah. Dale Jarrett in the uh, 88 Ford uh, Auto Care car. Right. Uh, you had, uh, uh, oh, uh, gosh, so many others. Uh, and Rusty in the two. Didn't Rusty you? in the two car. <laughs> Dale Sr., of course, in that black number three. I mean, racing everything from Talladega to, to Sears Point to Daytona. Uh -huh. I mean, that's how I got into the sport and uh, was a dad just giving me a Christmas gift of this computer game of sorts so that's how i got plugged in was a, a big part david because of my dad here charlie jones uh get me uh because of him i i, I am a uh, you know working sports and you know the nascar fan i am today david 
Well, I think it's awesome. Charlie, um, first of all, thank you for giving him that Christmas present because <laughs> look what it's turned into. Now look, look how he's done. I know you're proud of uh, Tyler there. And, uh, man, what a, what a uh, bright future Tyler has. And, uh, man, when I met Tyler, I could – right when I first met Tyler, that voice – you know, I just, when he said, hello, I'm, you know, <laughs> I knew right away. I knew, I knew what he would, what he did and what he was going to do. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, it's your son has done great for himself and, uh, he's done a lot for our industry and the coverage and, and the NASCAR coverage that he gives our sport has been outstanding, you know, and, uh, I'm proud to call him and Dominic, my friends, my buddies. And, uh, they uh they really make our sport better by what they do for it. So uh that's cool. Thank you for that. But uh Thank man, you. it's awesome having your dad on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty oh, awesome. Yeah. It was our it was our family time. All of sports was our way of connecting and, and staying close and spending quality time together. And so thank you. Yes. Thank you. Dominic yeah, that's uh, a bit tell us about you and Martine. Uh your your brother's a football coach and everything, uh, but uh you, what, what's the story there with, with you two and your, your relationship between the two of you? Yeah, so Martin and I, yeah, we're three, about three and a half years apart. And we've, all, like, I think kind of like you and your dad, we've always been connected by sports, maybe not necessarily auto racing, but we've gotten to, to really bond over watching football and playing football as kids and bonding on Madden video games, among others. And another thing, too, with Martin, he's very athletic and played all four years at the high school level of football. And, and I think this is Martin's story to share, but you ended up going to go play for New Mexico Highlands University in the rugby program. Tell them a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, so that was kind of a unique experience for me on that. And walking into a program that had a lot of success was definitely something that I wasn't used to, but definitely fell in love with just the competition. Like Dom said, he and I are always finding ways to compete. I mean, being the little brother, you always got to do that, whether that's competing on video games or us in the front yard playing basketball. So getting him to understand what the, the entailed with rugby and showing him those, those things on how the game was played, how the workouts would go. And that's something, you know, being back in grants and we're now colleagues, we just have all the time in the world. And I think with COVID uh, we're, we're joined at the hip, so to speak. We, we spend almost the whole days together, and it's just a cool experience with that. I know you asked about rugby, and, and it was definitely a cool experience, and I like to share those memories with him, calling and recapping the games with him. And uh, we won a title in 2019, and that was a cool, cool story to share with him as well. Nice. That's great. And that's awesome. You know, yeah. it's, it's cool to, to share those you know, growing up and being competitive, man, it just raises the bar for both of you. You challenge each other, you know what I mean? And uh, like our boys, DJ and Vance, man, they're just, you know, they're kind of like what you guys are talking about. You know, I, I, I believe having a little bit older brother that's three, year, three years older. Also, they're also three years different. Yeah, it's yeah. just, right. uh, yeah. absolutely. And it just, uh, man, it just makes Vancey a better athlete, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. they're very competitive and just to hear Dominic and, Martine, hear you guys talk, you know, just it's, uh, man, it hits at home with us because, yeah. man, it really, it elevates your competitiveness and your athleticism, you know what I mean? Just makes you a better athlete when you have a bigger brother that challenges, you know, and, yeah. uh, man, the rugby, that's, that, Martine, that's pretty awesome, man. So when you step into a program that was already successful, what, um, did, that, did that elevate you right away? I mean, that made you strive and get better. How, how did that work out? Well, big time. I mean, like I said, growing up, we'd always go play at the park together and it was always, we were never on the same team. He was always the captain of one team. I was the captain of the other. And, you know, playing with his friends that were older, I always tried to fit in with those guys. And so trying to prove like, you know, I, I can hang with these older guys. I can run, I can tackle. And so those experiences growing up from a young age really translated to the success, the successful part of the rugby side where I was like, you know, I want to compete with these guys and I feel like I can. I walked in as a true freshman and there were guys that they were coming off of a back-to-back -back title. And I was like, I want to prove that I can make it with these guys. They're the same age as my brother. So it just felt like, it felt like you know, as a kid again and had something to prove and, and trying to find that place to belong. And they definitely got the most out of me. I thought I was a person that worked hard, but it was like, you know, there, there's other athletes, other competitors out there that, they put you in check pretty quick if you're if you're not doing the work you need to be doing. Yeah. 
Absolutely, man. Well, congratulations, man. It's cool. Mm -hmm. I, I love y'all's relationship. Be able to work every day alongside your brother at the same high school and uh, being a coach, man, that's just, man, you're, uh, that's cool. You got a great story. And uh, obviously you're uh, the knowledge that you have for football and rugby, you know, passing that on to the, the kids you teach us. That's uh, man, there's no better gratitude than that, man. So uh, incredible. Well, David, uh, I we're think Dom's here with the right reasons on that as well. I mean, he's, he's the guy I can lean on and know that he has my back and we, we discuss things with how we can improve as coaches. So he's yeah. been a huge help on that, that side of it as well. That's what a blessing. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool, man. David, we're going to, we're going to spend most of the show today talking about you and Kim, but uh, I do want to ask just, you know, when, when you have Kim at the racetrack or as somebody by your side and such to, you know, whether it's, you know, seeking advice or just every step, what, what does, what does Kim mean to you in, in your racing career, David? Man. <laughs> yes. She's been through, you know, she's, uh, it's kind of like a, she rides the emotions with you, you know what I mean? So she's there to support you and, you know, when you're away from when you're, when you, she was just stand, she was there at the racetrack to support me and supported me well and encouraged me. And, uh, it was just somebody to, you know, you know, you're so into what you're doing and the, and the, the busyness of the day practicing and qualifying. And, you know, you're, you're so engaged with your team. Uh, when you disconnect from that and leave the racetrack, you know, and, and you sit back and you talk to Kim, we would always discuss what was going on and, you know, how I wanted to do or how I thought I was going to do. And, and, uh, but, you know, it's interesting because, uh, you know, she, she rode that roller coaster with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, we have a great race. We celebrated big and, yeah. and man, when we didn't have a good race, you know, the, the, man, the emotions of, of failure and like you let your team down, you let yourself down. She, she rode that with me, you know what I mean? So uh, I always felt like, uh, you know, it was uh, tough on her because, you know, sometimes it was, uh, man, we were on top of cloud nine and the other times we were just, man, it was challenging, you know what I mean? But, uh, but as a partner, you know, it just, you know, it was, uh, it was awesome, you know, when, cause when it was not good, it was good to have her support, have somebody with you to kind of build you back up, you know what I mean? Give you that encouragement you needed, you know what I'm saying? So it was a great partnership, still is, and uh, that was a fun time, you know, and still a fun time. That's fantastic. Well, you know, I, I can relate a lot to what you said you know, about my dad here. I'm about to, uh, in case folks miss the announcement, I'm about to move to Omaha, Nebraska in the next couple of weeks. I've accepted a uh, position with a great television with their new 24 seven news network as a anchor and producer. And, uh, definitely excited about that and what that all entails. And, uh, you know, I'll be honest, you know, I've been weighing my options, looking to make a change of some sorts for a while, but every step of the way, um, you know, my dad and both my parents, you know, my mom included have been somebody that, you know, I can trust, I can turn to, you know, if I needed, advice or on making you know a decision of some sorts there's that trust that level of establishment there you know, we've been through the good times and the bad times together right. you know and, and i think that's where family is so important is right. you know your inner circle of sorts you you, you can't trust everybody and you got to have people that you can rely on and mm -hmm. and, and uh that w that's what i would say is more than you know anything you know of of that it just means so much i can have somebody i can trust like my dad like that Absolutely. Yeah. And hey, congratulations yes, to you, Tyler. That man, that's some awesome news, man. When I saw that, so cool. you know, four or five days ago, uh, man, I was just like, man, I was so excited for you, man. That's that's uh, that's a big deal, you know, going from radio to uh, yeah, news, a sports newscaster, or I don't know if I'm saying that right, but man, that's uh, that's pretty awesome. That's why when I hear you speak, you know, I'm like, man, I can close my eyes and and, and just hear you on television. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, man. Tyler has that, uh, that voice and, uh, you know, and, and you'll do that area of the country. They're going to be honored They're You know, they're, they're, uh, they don't know this yet, but, uh, but, uh, they're having, they're, they're going to, you're going to be an asset to that part of the United States. Omaha is going to, you're, they're going to benefit from you being there, dude. And I'm, I'm just excited for you and your love of sports, not just NASCAR or auto racing in general, just, you know, football, NFL, Major League Baseball, the NBA, just the, the sports, you have such a passion for it. And uh, 
So, uh, you know, people in Omaha, they're, uh, they're, uh, they're getting definitely going to have an asset in yourself. And, uh, and we're proud of you, man. It's pretty awesome. Well, I appreciate that, David. And, and uh, the other thing, too, with this is that, you know, at a national gig, Omaha's just going to be where I live. I'm going to be, you know, serving the whole country with this job, you know. And we've been talking about that my whole life of waiting for that, you know, national gig, that big right. uh, thing of some sort. It's been something, you know, we've – believed and prayed for, you know, and it's come to fruition. So I'm excited about that and just that, uh, that next step. So. so yeah, Tyler, kudos to you, man. I'm really excited for it. And, and working in media, you know how hard it is to work up that, that market ladder. And a lot of people in their twenties are cracking top 100, top 50 markets. You're going national at 24. I think that that's commended in itself. <laughs> that's awesome. Not many people can say they're doing that. So we're really happy wow. for it, really proud for you, and certainly your biggest cheerleaders in Grants, New Mexico. Well, thank you. I'm excited. We'll still get to do this show and my other uh, podcast, The Jones Report, which uh, I did actually. You know, I'm, I'm in my parents' house in uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, just outside of Tulsa, and uh, I've been doing that show, The Jones Report. My parents let me take over the, uh, the dining room yes. my last couple <laughs> of years of high school just to be able to do that show and do a webcast like we're doing now. I mean, that was uh, – that was crazy. I'd be screaming for two hours every day. Yeah. <laughs> it, was the, it was the shed, and it was the dining room. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Hey, man, without our parents, where would we be, man? You know, and, and, right. and your mom and dad never stopped being parents to you. You know, we, uh, you know, you still, uh, like you said, you call them for advice and uh, talk to them and set, you know, somebody can really trust and can – give you uh give it to you real you know they'll they won't sugarcoat it they'll give it to you real whether you uh, wanted to hear it or not you know and uh it's a beautiful thing man i just think yeah. it's just awesome and you know your parents are still supporting you will always support you and it's kind of cool to hear what you uh to take over the house as long as you have you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah that's true uh D dominic and uh martin one more thing before we uh say goodbye to the families here um there's you two, your relationship, what, what I find so fascinating, too, is that you got all sorts of stuff you're working on for the future that, you know, it, with you two, it's not just your brothers, your your business partners, too. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're brothers first, but we have each other's best interest at heart, whether that be on the coaching side or just the support. And like, like you said, I, I think David hit it best. Our, our parents are always our biggest support and they're always there to help us. And, and we have that same relationship. And and I look at Martin, and he is my biggest support there as well. He's been my biggest encourager on doing things and taking leaps of faith and, and being right there to help me with calculated risks. He's always been somebody that has had my back. And, and yeah, I mean, we, we always look at entertaining things. So I, I don't think anything's out of question for us. But, yeah, it, it's an awesome relationship. Definitely like a checks and balance system. You know, sometimes yeah. like you said, there's things you don't want to hear, but you right. got to hear it. And who better than the, the person that – that kind of knows you the best and where your strengths and weaknesses are. Yeah. Absolutely, man. It's a wonderful thing. Well, that's great. Well, so uh, what high school, Hey, what high school you guys, where you, which high school is it? So it's Grants High School. It's a public high school in our town of Grants, New Mexico. It's the only school in the area in the city of Grants. And we're both alumni. I'm a 2012 graduate. Martin's a 2016 graduate. And uh -huh. Martin played for the current head coach that has, that's been there now seven years. And, during the pandemic era of things, the head coach was able to get Martin back, got him a, a spot on the staff. And, and I think Martin, yeah, tell him a little bit about your role there with the team and what you've been doing kind of day to day. Yeah, so this is my third year coaching football. And in the past, I was just the defensive lines coach and the receiver's assistant. And the track record kind of spoke for that. And I, I sat down one day in the summer with the current head coach and just discussed with all the things that I learned from him from from the time that I spent in college and, and from rugby and the, the positions I was coaching previous. And so he offered me the strength and conditioning job and with the building off of the D lines coach, he wants me to help with the, um, the D line as well here. And along with taking over receivers and quarterbacks. So calling a little bit of offense this year will be a new step in that direction. And then um, he also wants some help on the special team. So it's kind of like, he, is, he asked me to be his assistant head coach, and so that's just a good experience for me being 23 years old in my third year coaching. I, the more I can handle, let, let me see what I can do 
Yeah, and I got to say, too, Dave, Tyler was out here in New Mexico over the summer, and I've learned to never say never because Tyler and I were sitting one morning talking, drinking some coffee, and he's like, Dom, you think you'd ever – help out coaching is that something you think you'd ever do I'm like, oh never never that's something i will never do well <laughs> two months later helping martin out in any way we could given the, the conditions with what's going on in new mexico and how we could have little pods and what we could and couldn't do i was helping martin set up equipment and i started going every day with him so been able to, to go to the practices with him and help him in any way i can and it's it's been amazing i've learned to say never never say never because yeah. you can plan plan and plan and god's got something else planned for sure Ab- take you another direction <laughs> absolutely man absolutely i i think it's awesome that martin played high school football for the coach now he's working beside him and he's part of the staff i mean that that is really that that don't happen a lot you know what i mean and i think that's really cool and i love hearing martin everything you're doing you know what i mean uh, if uh you know couple more years, you'll go play, be a coach in the college, and next thing you know, you'll end up here in Dallas, Texas with the Dallas Cowboys, and we could use your help right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's, uh, that's great. Uh, guys, uh, Dad, thanks for stopping by. Martin, thanks for stopping by. Kim's going to stick around, and uh, we appreciate you joining us. Hey, Charlie. Today. Nice to meet you guys. Charlie, Merry Christmas to you, sir. And, uh, yeah, thank you so yeah. much. Uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, Martin. Uh, Merry Christmas to you and man, it was it's it's been a it's an honor to meet you guys and uh, man, it's uh, thank you for sharing some of those uh, your stories and your family stories with us. Yeah, it's great. Bye, absolutely. Thank you guys for having us. Happy Merry Christmas. Uh, Happy New Year. Absolutely. So, bye, Martin. If you're watching on uh, on video, now's the awkward part where we uh, transition the chairs and center the microphone. (laughs) (laughs) We'll uh, charge on with the rest of today's episode of Let's Go Racing with David Starr. So, so, so David and uh, Kim, I got to ask you, where did it all start for you two? When did you first meet? You want me to start? Yes, go. (laughs) It's a great question, Tyler. My brother has always had the need for speed. And so he heard Uncle Mike was having a running an ad on the radio about Team Texas, the school that he owns, Team Texas High Performance Driving School. And so my brother was like, I want to do this. I want to go out and race these cars, you know. And so I grew up in Plano, Texas, talking about football. Oh my gosh. So we, we didn't know anything about NASCAR. And so we we're like, my whole family packed up, went out to the track and see what my brother was going to do and all of that. And so anyway, my, um, I was single at the time. And so my sister-in-law was like, look at that guy over there. Oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, he's cute, but you know, I'm just having fun being single, you know? <laughs> and, um, and so what anyway, she's trying to say is there's a lot of cute, handsome guys around. You know what I mean? So she didn't. Oh no. But anyway, so before I know it, my sister-in-law is going over and getting his phone number. And I have no idea what's going on. And so anyway, that's just kind of how it got started. And then he called me that night, but I didn't answer the phone. I was playing it cool, you know, (laughs) and um, I was with my girlfriends. And so then we talked the next day, which was a Sunday. And he said, Hey, I'm going out of town. Had no idea what he did for a living. And I thought he worked there at the, at the track, giving race car rides. And so anyway, he called me the next day. He said, I've got to go out to Charlotte for about a week, but I'd like to take you out to dinner when I get back in town. And I said, yeah, sure, that sounds great. So he gets back in town. He takes me to Papa's Brothers Steakhouse, which is a really, really nice steakhouse in Dallas. And um, so we're sitting there at the table and the host, the maitre d', however you want to word that, comes over and he said, oh, Mr. Starr, I saw you racing last night. And I was like, racing? What is he talking about? You know, the next thing I know, we're on a private tour of the wine cellar. I mean, (laughs) just, you know, all the perks started flying, you know, and I was still trying to process, you do what now? You know, so anyway, that's how, that's basically how we met. And before I knew it, I was going to races. And then before I knew it, I was at every single race. And yeah, (laughs) I mean, it was so fun. I had a blast running around to all the, the different races with David and, you know, learning about the whole NASCAR life. And now it's like, it's in my blood. It's never going away. It's there to stay forever. What she, what she left out Tyler and Dominic was, uh, you know, when, uh, when I first, um, you know, we were, I was racing, I think we were racing in St. Louis and I finished second or third and, 
it was a Saturday night, and I flew home first thing Sunday morning. I was still on a natural high from from having such a great race. We didn't win the race, but we had a great finish. And uh, and uh, so when I landed back here in, in Dallas Fort Worth, I said, "Man, we're you know we're having a racing school this weekend on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday." I said, "Man, I." I landed and I jumped in my pickup truck, and broke, uh, ran out to the Texas Motor Speedway just to help out, you know. And um, I noticed her right away. And and what she didn't tell you, you know, I went over and <laughs> met her mom and offered her mom a free race car ride and, and yeah. offered to Kim a free race car ride. And uh, it was just it was cool to to meet her family. And and uh, you know, but, when when I was done working, she was gone. So I was like, man, I was kind of disappointed. But the, her sister in law gave me the number and. <laughs> That all worked out. I called her, and, and uh, I think I was gone for about 10 days, but um, she honored her commitment. I asked her out on the phone when she finally answered, picked up the phone to talk to me. And uh, when I got back from racing, uh, we went out, and then, um, and then you know, it was all about her. I was learning about her, and then uh, somebody at the restaurant come over and said, hey, man, I watched you at the race. You had a great race, whatever, and kind of kind of – kind of screwed up the situation because it was just all about her at the time. But, uh, but anyway, it all worked out. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, we were, we were dating a little bit and, um, and then I had to, we, I was driving for Wayne Spears at the time and we had a test and at the Milwaukee mile. And, uh, unfortunately I had a, th- a throttle that stuck on my, uh, on my race truck. We were, it was on a Wednesday afternoon and, uh, hit the wall head on going into turn three and uh, thank God for the Hans device. I tested it big time. Uh, we knew it worked, but it saved my life. But it broke my left hand, my left foot, and my collarbone. And uh, so, you know. And you passed out. Yeah, yeah, I passed out. But From the pain and everything else, yeah. But uh, <clears throat> a doctor friend of mine in Austin, Texas, Dr. Mike Putney, said, hey, if you ever break a bone or whatever, racing or, you know, whatever, make sure – that the doctor wherever you at make sure they get in touch with me so uh when they finally got me an ambulance and took me to the hospital uh they they were telling me i needed some major surgery and i said hey if you'll grab my phone and and uh call dr mike putney in austin texas let him know what the diagnosis is what i need uh, he he asked them to to uh sedate sedate me so the mm-hmm. pain would i could handle the pain and uh, Wayne Spears sent a private jet uh, sent a private jet from Dallas Texas to the Milwaukee mile to pick me up and to fly me to Austin Texas so I had I had asked one of my team members one of my crew members at the hospital with me hey call my buddy Ron Vaughn in Dallas so he called Ron and I said hey Ron this girl I've been seeing a little bit ask her if she wants to jump on the airplane with you and and fly up to Milwaukee and to pick me up and to go to Austin with me so uh, Mike Putney could put me back together. And uh, so anyway, I'll let her take over the story. It's kind of interesting. (laughs) Well, so anyway, I was out with my friends that night. We were eating uh, Mexican food at a little restaurant and off of down in uptown in Dallas. And my phone's just blowing up, but I don't know the number. So I'm like, who is that? And so I finally answer. I think I got back home and I answered it. And he's like, Kim, it's Ron. It's Ron Vaughn. And I was like, who's Ron? And then I was like, oh, I know who Ron Vaughn is now. He's like, David had an accident. And I was like, what do you mean David had an accident? And he goes, he was in his, you know, he's in the truck testing and the throttle stuck. And I was like, what's the throttle? I mean, I just had no, you know, because I knew nothing about racing or the intricacies of, you know, what, what things were about the cars and the trucks and stuff. And so anyway, he was like, the gas pedal. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. So anyway. We got jumped on that private jet that Wayne sent for us and we flew up there, got David, then flew to Austin. And that's just kind of the start of our, you know, when we really, you know, got close. You got to kind of had to take care of him. (laughs) You got to understand when you're, when you're left. There were things that had to be taken care of. When your left hand is broke and your left foot is broke and your right clavicle, your collarbone is broke. You can't really, you're not very mobile. So, so Kim, we just started dating and man, I went over to her place, uh, downtown Dallas, and uh, she took care of me for like two weeks. Yeah. Was, and, and man, we laughed. God, we laughed uh, so we much. Laughed so hard. We laughed so hard because the truth of the matter is <laughs> I wanted to cry. Instead of crying, I was laughing, you know what yeah. I mean? So we laughed a lot instead of crying. You know, sometimes when you want to cry, you just laugh to, to hide the tears. 
That's yeah. what we did because I was in so he much pain. He couldn't even brush pain, his teeth. I mean, know? it was that, you know, it was that bad. You don't realize how much you <clears throat> use your, you actually use your collarbone until you've broken it. Absolutely. But that was the start our, of our relationship. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, that's how it all started. It was kind of, uh, kind of crazy. I think it her took off pretty quick. I mean, which is the nature of the beast, you know, I mean, it's, I remember was delayed. Kim yeah. was said her mom, her mom had called and tell him what your mom said. Oh, my mom was like, wait a what did she say? She was saying, you sure you want to get involved? Oh, yes, yes, yes. She was like, You're, are you sure? That was actually my cousin, Angela. Okay. But anyway, she was like, "Are you? Sh- do you think he would change careers? And I was like, <laughs> mm, not so much. No, I'm pretty sure he's not going to go sell insurance somewhere. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, and Tyler, wait, your dad sells insurance, right? Yes, yes, he does. Oh, tell him no offense. I don't mean okay. it like that. But you know, like you you know, you can't see David going and sitting in a cubicle with a phone all day. I mean, he's got to be around those race cars. That's what he right. was born to do. So anyway, yeah, I was telling my family, no, he's not going to, I don't think there's any getting out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> but then they all fell madly in love with him. So, and they just always, you know, wish him well and pray for him and, you know, hope he does good. And so, yeah. And I have to ask you, Kim, how did yeah. David propose? How, how what's the story behind that? If there was an interesting oh, story behind it. It was so great. It was, and we're actually coming up on our anniversary. Um, so he, um, we lived out in Flower Mound, which is west of, it's almost close. It's pretty close to the track. And we had an amazingly beautiful house that we bought before we even got married. And um, so we had two boxers and One was Harley, one was Daisy. Harley was the boy. And so anyway, we had gone and looked at rings, but I just didn't know when. And so it was Christmas morning and we woke up and, um, and David, I go, let's go, let's go over presents. And he's like, let's pray. And I was like, what? (laughs) Not that we don't pray and not that we don't, you know, we're not, we're Christians, but I was like, well, he never does that. What is he doing? You know, (laughs) that was so weird. I was like, what are you, stop it. So anyway, we prayed, you know, and all that. And then I run down and we start, you know, kind of separating our gifts out and everything. He goes, well, hold on a second. And um, so he went in the kitchen and I was kind of doing my thing. Well, what he was doing was he was tying a ribbon around Harley and hanging my, my ring off the ribbon. And so our house was all glass. It was all windows. It was very bright in there. So Harley, Harley, I'm like, come here, Harley. You know, and he starts running towards me. And then I saw that bling, bling off of the bow. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. You know, and I started freaking out. And uh, so then he got down on his knee and asked me to marry him. And I said, yes, of course I will. (laughs) And so we ended up, that was Christmas morning. He proposed. And then we actually got married on January the 5th, um, a year later on January the 5th, which is his mom's birthday. So we celebrate our wedding anniversary with his sweet mom's birthday. And the cool, you'll never forget that wedding anniversary. Yes. (laughs) How long you guys, how long you guys been together now? Well, we met in 2003 and we dated until um, we dated for about five years. We got married in 08. So we've been together 17 years. Yeah. And, and, you know, when I, when I proposed that Christmas morning, uh, Kim had a video or something going. We have a video on accident. That's right. We were videoing our, our us opening and gifts. gifts. And uh, yeah, so she had turned the video camera on and set it somewhere. So it was, it captured everything on an accident, you know what yeah. I mean? So we, we kind of uh, built that. We uh, Kim hired a video, videography uh, for our, for our, our, uh, videographer for our, uh, our wedding. And, and, and in that, in that video shows when I proposed, yeah. you know, and I couldn't believe that that moment was captured on accident, but it was all captured. It was pretty cool. Pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. They deal. came out and my mom set that up. So they came out and they interviewed me and then they interviewed David <clears throat> and then they put it all together. And then we're like, wait a minute, that video, we got to show him this. And then he dubbed that into the, if that's the right word, but dubbed it into that clip into the, 
into our wedding video. Yeah, it was so pretty cool. aw- pretty awesome, man. Yeah, pretty awesome. So cool. And the, and the crazy thing, you know, I, I dated Kim forever. It wasn't five years. It might have been seven. No, it wasn't. Was it five years? We got married in 08. <laughs> okay. And we started dating in 03. I thought it was forever. You know what I mean? But, you know. I don't and, know whether to take that in well, a good way that or That was a, a bad great way. thing. <laughs> You know, we were just busy. I know we're, I was busy racing every week and, you know, just there was a lot happening. You know what I mean? I had this cool girl that I fell in love with and, and didn't want her. I wanted her by my side 24-7. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but man, the racing business, 2003, I was driving for Wayne Spears. You know, we were winning races. We're just competitive every week and going to the, the NASCAR banquet. And Rick Allen, Rick Allen on <laughs> – NB on the ESPN. I think ESPN would covered our, yeah. our our NASCAR truck series then. And man, Krista Voda and Rick Allen. I swear for four or five straight years, you know, you finish in the top five. You know, I finished. We're at the banquet. You know, the first ten years or whatever. Yeah, so fun. And man, they you know you finish third, you finish fourth, you finish fifth. They and they celebrated the top ten. First, you know, 10th through 1st through our, to our champion. And, and uh, you got to go up on stage. They set you in a chair, and Chris Devota and Rick Allen would interview you. It was awesome, you know. And, uh, and man, I remember, uh, like, the second 2004, you know, we're talking about the season and how great of a season you had and what's going on for the next year and, you know, and about a race you won or almost won. And then next thing you know, Rick Allen says, Hey David, when are you going to propose to Kim? (laughs) And I'm like, what? (laughs) You know what I mean? Here we are national television on ESPN. We're talking about, you know, we're celebrating uh, the spear Wayne and Connie Spears is there McCarty and just, the whole industry is there at this banquet and everybody's doing their thing, you know, in their chair. And, uh, you know, when it was my turn and I'm doing my thing, talking about the season and thanking Chevrolet and Wayne and Connie and Dave McCarty, my crew chief. And, you know, just out of the blue, Rick Allen says, Hey David, <laughs> when are you going to propose to Kim? You know, and just kind of caught me off guard. You know what I mean? I'm like, wow. And then, and oh, the whole, they just died. They Everybody did. laughed. It was awesome. It was really, it was a good little, just to get you off your, you know, your game a little bit. It was, it was something fun. It definitely, they got, they, they kicked me <laughs> off my game. That's what they did. And they did it every year. They did it every year until I proposed to Kim, you know what I mean? I finally, you know, it was like, it was, it was all in fun and it was awesome. Well, and like going back to that, NASCAR is a family and you become family, you know, and I was there every single race and I was there, you know, we didn't have a motorhome where we went. So I would sit in the hauler and I was around with all the officials and all the media all the time. And they became really good friends. You know, it's like a little family that travels around together. And I think they were just excited for us and, you know, wanted to see, wanted to see what, when the big day was going to be. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so Kim, what's been your favorite memory being alongside David at the racetrack all these years? Well, when he won, that was, I mean, so the first time he won that I was with him was um, St. Louis, I believe. Yeah, it was St. Louis. And he did a little bump and run on, who was that? Chad, it was uh, Chad Chafin. Was driving Chad Chafin, Bobby Hamilton. Yeah. yes. He did a little bump and run and got around him. And I was just like, Oh my God, you know, and I, and McCarty was not one to like, he was not a touchy feely lovey kind of guy <laughs> at all. And so I was standing on the pit box on, and McCarty was sitting down and I was like, just shaking him like this, you know? And, and um, anyway, so anytime you won, that was the best memory for me because the, nobody deserves it to me more than he does, you know? And so I got to see it happen a couple of times. I got to see it in, um phoenix and in in st louis and um so but you know i mean just i remember like it was you know like living there and i would make his sandwiches and i would cut his steak and i would (laughs) whatever (laughs) you know it was just like we were just kind of living like little gypsies on the road and it was it was just so much fun so there's a lot of good memories but i just would have to say for sure when he would win would be my favorite favorite it was so emotional yeah what what about you, David? What's your favorite memory with Kim at the racetrack? 
me cutting a steak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, there's so many, you know what I mean? There are just so many, just, I, you know, like your dad, Tyler, the support, um, you know, just, uh, man, there's just so many, it's hard to pick out one great one, you know, just Ben Ellis, being able to celebrate something that was so special with you that people don't realize how hard it is. It's really, 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 it's one of the toughest things to do is to win a NASCAR race. There's no way around it. And I mean, besides the, you know, there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears that goes into it. And boy, you can just ride the emotional roller coaster like nobody's business. And it's like, did that just happen? And I remember Connie Spears would go, that's racing. I was like, no, that can't happen. That, how did that happen to him? You know, or something like that, <laughs> whatever it might've been. And um, so, yeah. And I think, you know, David really, he was so used to being by himself and on, on his own. I mean, of course he had girlfriends and stuff, but I don't think, I think I was one of the first that ever was there with him that much. And I think before it was, it was kind of like it was over before we knew it because I started having babies <laughs> and I didn't go anymore. And he's like, I didn't know I enjoyed having her that much there, you know, not just to cut his steak, yeah. but to, cause I would tell him honestly, you know, and he knew he could trust me, you know, and it's, I hate to say it, but it's such a cutthroat business. One day you're on top, the next day you're not, nobody talks to you anymore, you know, that kind of thing. So I think that, you know, it's, if I can speak for David, I think it's nice to know that he's got somebody there by his side that truly loves him, is watching his back. I mean, I would just get, I would get just as mad as he would at, at times, you know, and at people and watching people for him. And I was kind of like his other set of eyes. I'd be like, hey, I just saw this over here. <laughs> that kind of thing. So we, we had a good time. We were a great team together. And yeah. uh, man, it was just fun, you know, just, uh, you know, just trying to make the right decisions in the sport, trying to move your career forward and, and to be uh, to be loyal to the people that there's so many people that do so much for you. And sometimes in this business, you have to make a decision that, you know, it's like, man, there's a better opportunity out there, but you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. And uh, just trying to make sure you navigated uh, the process in a good positive way. You know what I mean? It was always good to bounce ideals and she knew always what was going on and when opportunities would come. And, and uh, so, man, it just kind of like your dad, Tyler and, and Dominic, your brother, just having somebody that could set, could understand where you were and, and to give you the advice uh, that they thought would be best for you. And then you can make your final decision. But uh but man, what a what a great industry! Uh, you know, NASCAR racing has been great to our family. We wouldn't have what we have today. Our kids, just everything we have, is because of this great sport and the great people, the race fans, and man, and you know, all the sponsors. Man, there's just you know, we're family. We have such a big family because all our sponsors, and and we'll and, we'll, and you know, and I can't wait for another show to spotlight those guys because man they support you and, and their family, you know, so it's just such a great big family. But for me and Kim, man, it was just, uh, you know, our relationship, our marriage and just everything that brought us together, we did it. It was together in racing, you know, it was all about racing and traveling and winning and losing. And then the people we were driving for and just, it was just, it was awesome. It's still awesome. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it was, a, it was a fun ride, but it, it wasn't all pretty. I can assure you that, you know what I mean? It wasn't all pretty, you know, the, you know, the, the, the hope and, and the drive and the dreams, uh, what drives you to win and what drives you to be competitive, you know, when, when you're not, and you're not on top of your game, man, she, 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 she rode that roller coaster with me, man. And she did an awesome job. And, Every once in a while, if I felt sorry for myself or if I got down, man, she was there to put a big old eight foot, you know, <laughs> up my rear to make sure, hey, you know, feel sorry for you. You got two more minutes, feel sorry for you. Then we got to get on with whatever we got to get on with. You know what I mean? So yeah. she's just always been great and a great supporter. And I'm very blessed to have her. Thank you. Yeah, and Dave and Kim, kind of building on that too. I know your sons have gotten to go with you to the racetracks over the years. What are some of your favorite memories of having DJ and Vance at the track with you guys? Uh -huh. 
Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, DJ was born in March and we raced in June, I think. So he was like three months old when he started going to the track and just having them there with us. It's just kind of like, it's, it's an extension of me being there with David and David being there with me. And then now you got your other, the loves of your life, you know, with you and they can't sit on the pit box anymore. Um, which is really a bummer because somebody almost got hurt. So, um, they used to, what, what, one of my favorite memories is being able to walk out on <clears throat> pit road with David, stand at the car with him, watch, watch him get buckled in, kiss on him, love on him, pray with them. And then I get to take the boys back to the pit box with me and they sit up there and they've got their headsets on and they're like, go dad, mm-hmm. you know, the, I was just, that brought me to tears, you know, to watch that. And, um, and they've both done it since they were babies. So I think that's my, you know, I, I loved just all of us being able, and I still love all of us getting to be together because we still go, you know, but um, they don't get to sit on the box anymore. So that's okay. Yeah, that, that's yeah. right. It's, uh, you know, it's all, NASCAR does a great job. It's all about safety, but man, that's the coolest thing. Having your boys in the garage with you, you know, uh, while you're working on the, my guys are working on the race car, they're making changes and, and looking over and seeing your kids that got the radios, you know, and they're right there and they want to help. I oh see. yeah. DJ's like, dad, this over here and that over <laughs> there. And something that ha- I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I have to tell them this is so funny because you know, the, the media loves to interview the driver kids, right? They love to yeah. go talk to the driver's kids. And, and so, um, they're talking to DJ and he's in the garages during, you know, practice change or something was going on and around the car and you look up on big hoss and there's dj well before you know it the officials are over there going get out kid (laughs) they were interviewing me and now i have to go (laughs) it was so cute nascar has some great rules and hey it's it's all for the you know for the safety is you know safety first even with the driver's family and and you know the rules apply to everybody you know but it's cool and have your kids in there wanting to be part of it, wanting to work on the race car. You know, they're right there and, and they're holding my hand. A lot of times they're changing a spring or changing a shock and DJ would just hold my hand. You know, I could stick my hand outside the window net yeah. and he would hold my hand. And, and man, that's awesome. Yeah. Good that's, uh, that's fantastic. Those are some great stories and some memories to add. Um, you know, this past weekend, guys, I was just watching uh, Tiger Woods. He got to play golf with his son, Charlie. And yeah. just stole the show. How good of a golfer his son was. So much like his dad, too. Same mannerisms and everything. And that got me thinking with this. David, I know you're doing the racing school and everything. Your kids love being around the sport. Is there an interest in, in your boys getting involved in racing? And, and Kim, what do you think about that? Would you be able, What would you think about uh, your boys being racers or something someday? I say go for it. If they love it like their daddy does, then I'm all for it. You know, it's just what's meant to be. And, um, you know, those cars are so safe. And I've seen some horrendous wrecks. And I'm like, oh, my God, is that guy going to get out of there? I mean, I've seen him go through some bad stuff, too, you know. And um, I just know how safe they are. And so, DJ, um, he's kind of gone away from it. He had an interest, I'd say, up until about three or four. But Vancey is all about it. And he wants to race sprint cars. That's what he wants to get into right now. And, um, and so uh, he's up there listening. So anyway, he wants to get into sprint cars. Those freak me out a little bit. I don't know that much about them, you know. So, um, but, you know, we'll see what happens and see if he continues on with that passion, you know, the older he gets. But I tell David all the time, I'm like, you got a racer here. You better, you better find a way to get him going, you know, before, <laughs> before he loses that passion, because you want to still be doing it somehow, some way, you know, when you're retired and that he's your ticket. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Kim hit it. You know, you, you guys understand this cause y'all have it, uh, the passion and desire, you know, so Vancey's, you know, he's right now he's upstairs playing his NASCAR heat, you know, and he's, he's got his iPad and he's showing me races and watching sprint car races. And he's like, he wants to race. He calls it the muddy track. You know, we go yeah. the dirt track, but he wants to race on the muddy track. He wants to race sprint <laughs> cars, man. He, uh, he studied it. He's passionate about it. And, uh, you know, he's my racer. That's what it takes if you're going to do this. And, mm-hmm. uh, we're working on it. We, uh, we're working on all of it. It's, uh, you know, you guys understand uh, the the beauty of Christmas time and family. We're we're right in the middle of that, you know. But also, you know, I'm working trying to 
uh, make sure my, the partners that my partners are still my partners and trying to bring on some new sponsors. And, uh, you know, daddy's busy right now trying to figure out what 2021 looks like, you know, and then, and then I got Vancey Vance, my son, he's like, dad, let's, you know, uh, let's go to the sprint car race. You know, I'm ready to race that. You know what I mean? So there's, there's a lot going on in the, in the star family right now. And, uh, we're going to enjoy Christmas as a family. Uh, and then, uh, you know, hopefully we'll announce something as soon as possible about what our plans are uh, in NASCAR, who we're going to be driving for and all the different partners that we're going to have. That's going to be awesome. And then, you know, after we know what those plans are and we can get to go to Daytona, get the season started. And then I'm, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be like trying to figure out how to get Vance in a sprint car at, at his age and where we do that at and what kind of car. So there's, there's a lot going on here. So uh, <laughs> the beautiful part is that, you know, kind of like you, Tyler, you know, sitting there with your dad and, and, and Dominic sitting there with your brother, you know, following, you know, I was, when Charles, your dad was talking, Tyler, you know, you followed in your dad's footsteps. I followed in my dad's footsteps and man, it's that, that's cool. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. pretty cool to have uh, your son wanting to follow you in your footsteps. Pretty awesome, man. That is too cool. Definitely happened for you guys and excited to see uh, what goes on with your kids. We're certainly going to be following them and, and rooting them on. Uh, a couple more things before we get out of here today. We'll have Ask David in uh, just a moment. But first, time for this week's NASCAR news and notes. Dominic, what do we got this week? Yeah, so every week on the show, we take a look at the top three or four NASCAR headlines that are going around from the last time that we've talked on this podcast and unfortunately one of the biggest items of news that we've been following too unfortunately is sherry pollux the longtime girlfriend of nascar cup series driver martin Truex jr announced on social media last friday that her cancer has returned so pollux has been battling that and she battled it about six years ago as well so our, our thoughts and prayers go to her and and her entire family and, and hope she's able to to beat cancer like she has the previous two times and I, can I just jump in real quick? I don't know ahead, if David's yeah, told absolutely. you, this, but I am a breast cancer survivor. Now I know hers is, I believe hers is ovarian, mm -hmm. uh, if I remember yeah, correctly. Right. Yeah. Um, but I've just thought about her over the years and I know how, oh my gosh, just terrifying it is. And if I could, you know, if somebody says, I mean, if she could just hold on, you know, and continue that fight because my mom had it um, back in 1993 and I have seen just an amazing progression of drugs come out, you know, for treating cancer and keeping it at bay and things like that. And so anytime I, you know, run into somebody that has cancer, whatever it may be, my thought, my big, I'm just like, don't give up, hold on. You never know when that next breakthrough drug, you know, is going to be. And so anyway, yeah, I just, that breaks my heart that it's back. I, I just, I, I mean, I'm just, I know, I know the fear, I know the terror, I know the feeling and it just be saying prayers for her. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, just Sherry Pollock's, I mean, anybody, you know, anybody that has to have that awful disease. I mean, I'm just going to say it. Cancer sucks. Um, it's had hit at home with us. And um, nobody should have to ever, ever, ever deal with that. And unfortunately, it's not like that. And uh, Sherry's done a tremendous job. You know, her and Martin Truex Jr., they have raised money on, on their foundation for other cancer patients. They have did so much. And it's just, you know, I'm sad to hear the news, but I'm, uh, I'm sure everybody's praying for her. And I'm sure they have wonderful doctors and, and you know, and, and I know that, they have beat this in the past and they'll beat it again, but it's just, um, I just, I just hate it that anybody has to go through that. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, uh, we're blessed that we, we, we was able to, to beat that very blessed. We still pray and count our blessings every day. Uh, you know, nobody should have to ever, uh, you know, you don't wish that on, on anybody to have to go through those treatments and have to deal with that and get the news. But, uh, man, we are, we are definitely praying for them and I hope that they have peace and I hope those doctors have all the knowledge yeah. they need to make sure that she's going to beat it again, man. And I'm, uh, I'm just, I pray for them and I'm, and uh, just can't wait to hear the outcome. I'm sure it's going to be great. Yeah. Absolutely. And some other NASCAR headlines. For sure. Uh, we're, we're certainly thinking 
Yes. Yeah, and, I, I was just saying we're certainly thinking of uh, of Sherry and Martin, and our best goes out to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And just some other NASCAR headlines, too, from the last few days. MBM Motorsports announced their plans to field two entries in the Daytona 500 in, in just seven short weeks here that's coming up for the 500 in 2021. You're going to have Timmy Hill and Chad Fincham attempting to make the Daytona 500 as open cars for MBM Motorsports. It's Carl Long's team. He filled full-time entries in the Xfinity Series. And it sounds like Chad Fincham will also be attempting some more cup races in 2021. Not sure if Hill will run the entire schedule like he did in 2020, but it sounds like those two will also have some races lined up in the Xfinity Series. Man, I think that's great. Carl yeah. Carl Long is such a great guy. Yeah. I mean, for everybody that knows Carl Long, he worked in he worked at our Spears Motorsports team when I raced the number oh, 75 right. Series in, yeah. the, in the Truck Series. And, you know, he worked at our shop, and uh, then he would go race his cup car. He's just uh, – Carl's a great, great guy. He's a great, great race car driver. But, man, his passion for the sport and to race is just unbelievable. And, uh, and to see what he's done as a car owner, he's got three or four Xfinity cars. And, you know, there's always that feel-good story. And I don't know if people remember back in 2000. This year, I, no, it was um, – was it this year Timmy Hill made the Daytona 500 driving for Carl Long, and it was such a great feel-good story. It was unbelievable, and the emotions, and, you know, they, I think they interviewed Timmy and uh, the emotions, man, to see the, the emotions from him and Carl, and it just it means so much <coughs> to make the Daytona 500. Yeah. So – Dream come true. <clears throat> yeah, that's – Huge. I'm just, I'm, and that's just great news. I'm glad that, I'm glad for Timmy and I'm glad for Chad. Those guys are just great guys that are part of our racing families. They're great race car drivers, hard chargers, and uh, man, I hope both of them make the Daytona 500. That'll be really cool. Yeah. Some other NASCAR news too. Out of the Xfinity Series, JD Motorsports announced actually earlier today that Jeffrey Earnhardt will be returning to the team full-time in 2021. Earnhardt has raced in the Xfinity Series over the last eight seasons and has flirted with some Cup Series starts and ran for Rookie of the Year in 2016 in NASCAR's Elite Series, but he's returning with some stability with a full-time ride to JD Motorsports in 2021. David, you're you're, uh, real familiar with that JD Motorsports team. How do you feel about the pairing with uh, JD Motorsports and, uh, and Jeffrey Earnhardt here? Well, man, Johnny Davis is a great car owner. I mean, what he's done for the the sport, the Xfinity Series, and filled in uh, four or five entries every week, year after year. He just, you know, he's done a lot for our sport, and uh, and he's given a lot of people opportunities, and that's a big deal. You know, you look at some of the drivers that he has that drive the JD Motorsports cars. It's a big deal, man, for people around the country that have so much talent and for them to be an avenue to get to professional auto racing and be a professional NASCAR race car driver, Johnny has done so much for so many drivers across the country. The country is amazing. And uh, the news about Jeffrey, I mean, I, I, Jeffrey's such a great kid, and uh, I don't know if he's a kid anymore, but he's <laughs> a, a great friend. And, uh, you know, the Earnhardt, <laughs> Jeffrey Earnhardt. And it, I just think it's cool having an Earnhardt name in NASCAR. NASCAR, you know, it's uh, when Dale Jr. retired, and there was not a na- there was not an Earnhardt in the field. Something's wrong about that in our sport. You know what I mean? And uh, so his dad raced for a while. Uh, Carrie, uh, Carrie, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. and and uh, it's just not right to not have an Earnhardt in NASCAR. You know what I mean? So Jeffrey, uh, I'm glad to hear of the news that he'll be back full time with uh, JD Motorsports and. Uh, you know, I pay attention to Jeffrey. He's a, he's a good friend and, and uh, race against him. And then when I – this year during the, the pandemic and, and I didn't – I wasn't full time and I would and I would watch him and uh, see where he finished. But he had some great runs, you know, and, and to keep that nucleus and come back to the same team with the same crew chief, same equipment, you know, it's just that team's only going to get better. And I look for Jeffrey to have a – a great year with uh, JD Motorsports, and uh, and again, it's it's just great having uh, Arnhart in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, and just you know, and like I said, I did, I hated it when the Truck Series and the NASCAR Xfinity Series or the Cup Series didn't have an Arnhart out there. You know, what I mean, something's wrong with that, don't you guys think? <laughs> right. Yeah. I know That's exactly. What you it's good to see. Jeff. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Good to see him land on his feet. And I think yeah. you hit it there Dominic, too, David. Got time? With... Oh, good. Good time. We got time for a couple more. We, we got time for a couple more, Dominic. What else we got? Okay, cool. We'll make this the last one. So you guys remember the all-star race where NASCAR moved the numbers more towards the rear of the car? That could be a possibility that NASCAR is exploring. So Adam Stern of the Sports Business Journal is reporting that NASCAR is experimenting with it and remains talking to teams about slotting numbers back more permanently in the future to maximize sponsorship exposure. So NASCAR is still kind of talking with the teams about this, but the earliest this change could happen is with the next-gen car set to debut in 2022. Man, I don't really know how I feel about that because I'm kind of those old school guys. Ever since I started going to the racetrack at Myers Speedway with my dad, you know, the door number, the numbers on a NASCAR, a stock car go on the door. You know what I'm saying? And and I I love what NASCAR is trying to do. They're trying to give our sponsors more exposure. And I understand that. I get it. But, I'm, you know, I'm old school. I'm a, I'm a creature of habit, and I kind of like the numbers being on the doors and on the roof of the race car and putting the sponsors on the hood and the upper rear quarter panels and the lower rear quarter panels. I'm just – that's just how it's always been in, in my career, in my lifetime, you know. And and I just don't really know how I feel about having the number on the rear quarter panel and putting the sponsor uh, where the number usually goes. You know what I mean? It's It's just – different but i you know i think everything nascar does over the years and everything i've always seen them do they're they're going to do what's best for our industry and whatever it is they may do i'll, I'll support it but i can assure you that you know it, it's going to be different if they make a change you know what i mean because i'm just so used ever since i was yeah. a little boy that the numbers go on the doors you know what right. i mean <laughs> So anyway, they, I mean, what's y'all's thoughts on that? It looks so unnatural when it's on yeah. anywhere else. It does. Uh, to me, it, it's got to be on the door. I know that they're trying to maximize sponsorship and such, but it, it just looks off, looks weird. I can't do it. It's got to be on the door. I'm with you, Dave. <laughs> yeah. I echo those thoughts too, guys. It's just I'm a creature of habit as well, and it's always been that way, having the numbers where they are. Let's try to leave them there for as long as we can. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Exactly. Guys, uh, time for our final segment of the show, Ask David. We uh, ask you to submit questions on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, hit us up at Star Podcast. We'd love to hear from you there. And uh, a couple questions this week. The first one is uh, from Hallie. Hallie writes, and uh, Kim, we'll, we'll ask you to chime in, give your answers as well. Uh, but this question will be for both of you. Uh, with Christmas around the corner, what gift from David's childhood does he remember the most? So, Kim, same with you. What question from your childhood maybe you remember the most? My pink Huffy bicycle. <laughs> My pink Huffy bicycle with the little strands and the white basket. It's the best gift ever. <laughs> 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 Nothing real exciting. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting, you know. Uh, absolutely. I love it. I loved it. Man, my best gift as a kid growing up was always my big wheel. You know, always uh, <laughs> my big wheel was a, a big deal, you know, when I was three, four, five. Man, I, my, I couldn't wait. I always asked Santa Claus for a big wheel and some Hot Wheels race cars, you know, and uh, a racetrack, one of those electric racetracks. But, man, the one that just comes to mind was just that big, that big wheel. You know, you had uh, – Three, two wheels in the back and one big one and pedals in the front. And man, it was kind of, I would put, uh, put numbers on, I would put number 43 on one side and number 14 on the other because my two heroes were, uh, Richard Petty, Richard Petty and, and AJ Foyt, Foyt, you know, and then I would put a number six somewhere on that. Cause that was Ronnie Chumley's number, you know? Yeah. So I got to, I, I felt like that was my race car, you know, and I would rate our driveway had sections, you know, and, and I would, act like I was at Meyer Speedway and I was racing around the racetrack in my, in my big wheel. But I could remember every time Santa Claus, I'd wake up Christmas morning and walk into the living room with my brother, Jim and Johnny. And uh, man, I, I always ask Santa, I want I want a big wheel, Santa Claus. I want a big wheel. When he delivered, man, I was so happy, but that's some of the memories I have of, of, uh, that's your favorite gift, you know, as my favorite gift yeah. growing up as a little boy. That's cool. Uh, you know, I said earlier, I, I love that NASCAR video game I got for Christmas one year, mm -hmm. but I got, I was learning guitar and got an electric guitar when I was about 11 or 12 years old. And that was kind of the sign oh. that 
I had said, oh, wow, I, I can actually play this thing. <laughs> I can, <laughs> you know, actually mean something of some sort. So uh, that was cool getting that from my parents one year. Dominic, how about you? Uh, is there a Christmas gift from your childhood that stands out? Yeah, I, I kind of think kind of like when we talked about that first podcast, that NASCAR 99 video game, Santa, mom and dad, of course, helping everything with Christmas that year. And gosh, we got a lot of games on the PlayStation 1 and Santa's gift of NASCAR 99 was awesome because that fueled my passion for the sport because nobody in my family watches or really cares about auto racing, but that fueled my passion at four years old. And then kind of like, I I feel like I'm copying you, Tyler. It wasn't an electric guitar, but I did get an acoustic guitar when I was eight years old and I kind of played around with that a little bit and eventually found my way to the drum set. But yeah, I I think those two stick out the most, the NASCAR 99 video game at four and then an acoustic guitar at, I think, seven or eight years old. That's cool. That's oh, you cool. see the differences in our gifts and y'all's gifts? Times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, hey, you know, and, and what's cool, I just I just hope all the parents out there, and you know, and, you know, like, uh, Dominic, your story and Tyler, your story, uh, you know, how racing, you know, started at a young age from Christmas gifts. And I just hope all the little boys out there and girls uh, that, you know, if you're three, four, five, or six years old, their NASCAR gifts will – We'll put them and they'll be able to tell about them later on how they became to love our sport of yeah. the stock car racing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just, I just think it's awesome. And uh, with all the cool stuff they have out there these days compared when we were kids, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, they didn't have a NASCAR heat, and all these cool <laughs> computer racing games, you know what I mean? So uh, I just hope Santa brings a lot more uh, racing games for all the little kids around the, the yeah. country. And, uh, and we got more, racers in the makings from that you know yeah. what i'm saying well, da- david's getting me a whataburger gift card for christmas to feel <laughs> absolutely <man>. awesome. <laughs> nice. all right another question this one comes from tracy tracy writes uh when the pandemic allows us to return to the track and camp out and watch races will david come out and grab dinner at the campsite in texas with his old friends from houston <laughs> absolutely <Yes. laughs> absolutely i will man i uh that's we, the best part is the infield <laughs> no, no, <laughs> and the camping <laughs> no doubt about man you know it's i love seeing all the drivers not all of them but man you'll see jimmy johnson and you know uh you'll just see some different drivers uh at night to come out into the infield and engage with the race fans you know because i you know, we talk about this all the time. Without our fans, we don't have a sport. You know what I'm saying? And uh, if they didn't come and buy the cars and buy the products and the sport and su- support our industry and support us racers, we couldn't do what we love to do. So, man, I'm, I'm all about the race fans. And, and uh, the ones from Houston, Texas, where I'm from, I mean, if I, if I see somebody from Texas, I'm in Daytona or Talladega, and I'll see somebody has a Texas license plate on. I mean, I don't. I, I stop and I go up and introduce myself because it, I, you know, it's just, I don't know. I love the race fans and, and I love the ones from my hometown of Houston, Texas, and I love them from Texas, but I love the fans from all over the country. You know what I mean? And uh, I can assure you that this pan, you know, this pandemic is, it's awful. You know what I mean? The, the worst, you know, every, even a bad day at the racetrack is a great day for me but man when we go to the race racing like we've been racing with no fans in the stands i gotta say this man that sucks it's terrible you know what i mean because it's all about the fans i love the fans and uh, man when the fans come back we're me and kim my boys you know we're gonna be out in full we're gonna be engaging in them we're gonna thank them for everything they do for the industry and for coming because i mean it's you know like I said, you know, you guys understand this. Without yeah. what you guys do, you know what I mean, uh, y'all bring it up and close and personal to the fans. And without us having fans to, to support our sponsors and the manufacturers and us as drivers, like, again, you don't have a sport, so the fans are everything. That's great. That's great. Uh, guys, we're uh, just about out of time. Uh, before we let everybody go here, let's uh, let's just go around the room. What's going on for – Christmas plans. Dominic, we'll start with you. What's going on with you and uh, the Oregon household? <laughs> yeah, so my mom and dad, my brother and I will be joining my grandma and grandpa on my mom's side and 
my mom's sister and her family, we always meet at my grandparents' house on Christmas Eve. We usually go after mass, but with, with everything going on this year, we'll probably watch mass online and go over, go have some tamales, some pozole, some chili, right. and we'll go home to our houses and then Christmas morning meet at my mom and dad's house and we'll go open presents and have a big breakfast and spend the entire day. So that's kind of our tradition that we do every year and certainly looking forward to it. And especially this year, we're so much, there's so much to be grateful for. And we're so happy to be able to do it again this year. Are you close that's to right. Placitas? I'm sorry, say it again. Are you close to Placitas, New Mexico? Plas yes, actually Placitas is about I feel like an hour and a half drive from here. Yes. My best friend just moved out there. She lives wow, in- Wow, that's a very small town yeah. too. It's not a lot of yeah. people on Placitas. It's dog. I mean, it's so cute. It's like- halfway in between Albuquerque and Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. so right there along I-25. Yes. Yeah. I've already been out to see her. It's awesome. Well, man, I love, I love y'all's, I love y'all's, what y'all are doing, man. Just, uh, again, Christmas family and, and your traditions. Yeah. It's just awesome. Love to hear that. That's awesome. Dominic. Yeah. What about you, Tyler? I'm, uh, I'm going to be with the family here in the Tulsa area for uh, the next couple of days. And, and uh, enjoying you know being them Christmas Day going to be my dad who you saw earlier my mom and my sister just enjoying the time together and then uh, the day after that we'll have uh, you know, go up to see my grandparents and some of my cousins aunts and uncles and such and and a Christmas be different because this is kind of a goodbye of sorts uh, I'm going from being three hours from them and being around for holidays and such to. Uh, double that time. I'm going to be six hours away. I'm not going to be able to be home for all the holidays and such uh -huh. anymore. So uh, that'll be a little bit different. Going to be uh, maybe a little emotional this Christmas, but nonetheless, it'll be a great time. So certainly grateful for it and grateful for family. That's what the holidays are all about. What's going on with the star crew? Yeah. Man, we, uh, <laughs> we don't know. We have no idea. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we live day to day. Yeah. Um, no, we're going to have um, Christmas Eve here at our house. We invite um, David's side of the family over and we typically cater in Mikosina or some, you know, some type of Mexican food and, um, uh, we open presents and things like that. So tell them what we really do. Drink. No. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh we play left, right, center. Yeah. We, we gamble. <laughs> they love to gamble. We drink and gamble with our children. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we're not shy uh yeah i know we uh so uncle michael come over with tanner and tyler his boys and then david's mom dad sister brother-in-law and their kids our kids and uh we'll do our christmas exchange My yeah jimmy johnny and Lori, aunt lola and uh, cindy and yvonne and danny the list is getting bigger isn't it i was trying to lay low because of the covid <laughs> situation <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but anyway. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And then New Year's, I mean Christmas Day, we usually go to my side of the family, but too many elderlies on that side, and we just they, we don't want to risk anything. So I think we're gonna go to David's sister's house and hang out over there and with them some more. So. Yeah, but what, but one of our cool tradition traditions, and just like uh, again, just like following our father's footsteps you know as a kid growing up uh you know we we would always go to midnight mass mm. you know being at christmas eve at my at mama's house my grandmother's and uh man we we had such a big big family and man i i love christmas i love christmas eve ever since i was a little boy i, I just love it the lights the, the trees santa claus just everything's awesome about christmas but uh going to midnight mass was always a tr tradition for us and yeah, uh man i had I have never missed a midnight mass and I'm not real sure if we're having midnight mass Christmas Eve night or not. And I will find out, but if we are, I'll be there. And if they're doing it viral, I'll watch it on a, you know, I will watch it on, on the computer. And, uh, but the coolest thing is waking up Christmas morning, man, waking up and having Vance and DJs like dad, dad. I mean, it's the sun's not even up, you know what I mean? And it, it's 6 a.m. or 6.30 or 7, and, man, they're just chomping at the bit. We make them sleep with us. and uh, I drug them. <laughs> we, we, we make sure I'm the kidding. doors – Make sure the door's <laughs> locked. But after midnight mass, uh, daddy comes home and uh, daddy's Santa Claus. And, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I, uh, uh, I put, uh, 
you know, I uh, put out all the, know. put out all this, the Santa Claus, uh, you know what I mean? And uh, so anyway, uh, and waking up Saturday morning, Christmas morning is pretty, pretty special and pretty awesome. So I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty excited about that. You know what I mean? And then, uh, but anyway, man, it's just, it's a great time for not only our family, y'all's family and all the families out there, just Merry Christmas to everyone. Yes. If you take one thing away from today's show, David Starr is not wink is not Santa Claus. Wink, wink. Right, exactly. Oh, He's just being silly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, guys, we got to run. Uh, as always, make sure to subscribe to Let's Go Racing with David Starr. New episodes out every Tuesday on Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, as well as the video version on YouTube. And uh, you can also follow us, follow the show on Facebook and Twitter at Star Podcast. And uh, also reach out to us via email, starpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, it's where you can find out more information, connect with us there. Dominic, what's going on on the uh, racingexperts.com this week? We've got another giveaway planned that's coming out Tuesday. So if you'd like to win some NASCAR merchandise and some relics and some autograph stuff, there's some great stocking stuffers. All you got to do is just follow us on Twitter and we'll take care of you if you win. That's great. Kim, thanks for stopping by and joining us. You were uh, such a delight, such a pleasure, and and, uh, you're welcome back anytime. Thanks for spending uh, your uh, evening with us and hope you and the family have a great Christmas. Well, thank you both so much for having me. It's been a blast, and I wish you all the best in everything and always. Thanks for letting us borrow your husband each and every uh, Monday of night. And if you want yeah, any we dirt appreciate on it. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're always, oh my gosh, always welcome. Well, man, <laughs> I, uh, again, thank you all for following our podcast. All uh, You guys do such a great job, and thank you for the fans that tune in and watch each and every week. And, uh, Jane, and I just hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. Enjoy it with your family. Take it all in. It's been a it's been a tough year for everyone in the world, and I just hope Christmas is extra special for everybody. And and I'm looking forward to uh, New Year's Eve and and to, for 2021 to get here. And uh, so anyway, Merry Christmas, everybody. And uh, Merry Christmas, we'll, Happy New Year. We'll see everybody back on the ne- on our next podcast <laughs> next week. We will see you then. Have a great Christmas, everybody. For David and Kim Starr and Dominic Aragon. I'm Tyler Jones saying so long. This has been another edition of Let's Go Racing. The checkered flag is out. We'll see you next week.